The Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Matt Smith from Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church, and this is Worship for Epiphany Sunday, February 14th, 2021. It's great to have you all with us today. As it is a second Sunday of the month, we will have a special second offering for the Lutheran Lakota Shared Ministries at Pine Ridge Reservation. This service will include hymns led by members of our choir, my sermon and a children's sermon but my sermon titled where's andrew and readings and prayers from our assisting minister today nancy holderied you can download our parish notes from facebook or our website bethlutheran.org where you can find out more about bethlehem lutheran church the main thing that i would like to highlight during these announcements right now is that this coming wednesday is ash wednesday Yes, Lent is upon us, which means Easter and spring are just around the corner. But for Ash Wednesday, that service will take place at 7 o'clock, or excuse me, at 6.30, and it will include the imposition of ashes. And so we're asking that you would take a, a wooden kitchen match and burn it down past the sulfur top, burn it down to the wood, blow it out, and then let it cool. And then when it comes time for the imposition of ashes, we ask that you, you rub that with your thumb and make the sign of the cross on your forehead or the forehead of your loved one and say the words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. We remember our mortality on Ash Wednesday and remembering our mortality is a great time for us to start our Lenten theme for this year, Lutheran Heroes. And so we'll start with the wisdom of knowing that we are dust, and to dust we will return. The Sundays after Epiphany began with Jesus' baptism and with three disciples today at his transfiguration, baptism on one end, transfiguration on the other. In his baptism, only Jesus hears the voice from heaven saying, you are my beloved. But today, the three disciples, Simon, Peter, James, and John, they hear the declaration too, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and with him, God is well pleased. 
Well, St. Paul writes, we are enabled to see the God light in Jesus' face because the same God who created light in the first place has shown in our hearts to give us that vision, the light of glory, of God's glory found in Jesus Christ. In Christ, we are enlightened in our baptism into his death and resurrection, and we shine for all to see. In solidarity with those who will not be receiving the Eucharist today, we will refrain as well as we anticipate the feast that is to come. Instead, we will feast on the words of Jesus, and it is enough. Now please join us, if you will, for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us. We have hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less of ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we invite children worshiping with us to come focus on their screens for our worship talk for children. Good morning. Thank you for coming up this morning. Um, my question for you today is: Do you have, do you have one of these books, or or maybe, maybe you have several? Where's Waldo? And what is it that we're supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to look at, at these great scenes that are in here and try to find where Waldo is. And I've I've always had lots of fun looking to try try to find Waldo and. Sometimes I have to search and search and search, and it seems like I'll never find him, but I keep searching. And in the sermon I'm about to share, well, the gospel story that I'm going to share, three of the disciples go up on a mountaintop with Jesus. And we know that there were more disciples than just those three. And not only that, the second disciple who was called in the gospel of Mark was Andrew. He's the first disciple in the Gospel of John, and he's nowhere to be found. I don't know where he is. And so I spend most of, most of the sermon today trying to look for him, trying to find Andrew. So it, it's kind of like, where, where's Waldo, but where's Andrew? And I hope you can, can stick around to listen to find out just where Andrew is. The good news is, that while we might get tired of looking sometimes when we've lost something, we might just give up and hope that somebody else will find it. God never stops looking for us. When we go astray, when we get lost, God is always looking for us to help us find our way back to God. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for being with us and always looking for us. When you wonder where we are, help us come to you quickly. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for coming to, to pay attention this morning. And, and uh, I'll keep this Where, Where's Waldo book in my office so that when we see each other again, you can, you can check it out and maybe try to help me find where Waldo is. We'll see you soon. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 50. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth in glory. A reading from Psalms. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, 
those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for today is from 2 Corinthians. God has shown light in our hearts so that we may see the face of Jesus Christ. The truth is not veiled to us. Paul writes, Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his disciple and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were there talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I bring you grace, peace, and love in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What a sight to behold as Jesus is transfigured before the disciples in front of Peter, James, and John into this dazzling white vision. It must have been quite a sight to see. It was a literal mountaintop experience as these three disciples got to see and understand a little bit more about who Jesus was. And that is really where I wanted to focus today in this message on that mountaintop experience because we all look forward to those times of having the mountaintop experience. But maybe it has something to do with how close we are paying attention 
in the Gospel of Mark as we read through it with Pastor John's guidance. And that close attention, paying such close attention to it, makes me wonder, what happened to Andrew? Andrew is the second disciple called in the Gospel of Mark. You have Simon, Peter, Andrew, and then James and John. What happened to Andrew? How come he wasn't invited to go up on the mountain for Jesus' transfiguration? I've been really focused on the narrative, the story of the Gospel of Mark. So this week, I was hoping to hear a little bit more about Andrew after the healing of Simon's mother-in-law, hoping to hear more about all of the disciples. So far, we've heard him call just four, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. But later in the gospel, we will hear of the call of the other eight. Maybe not the full story for all of them, but we'll hear them named. And in the gospel so far, you know, we've heard these four being called. And as we skip ahead to the glowing transfiguration of Jesus, a lot has happened from the call of those first disciples until he is transfigured before Peter, James, and John. We have the story of him calling Matthew, the tax collector, Levi, and all the other disciples are named. But what happened to Andrew? Why wasn't he included? Why didn't Jesus take him up on the mountain along with Simon, Peter, James, and John? In chapter 2 of Mark, that's where we hear of Matthew, the tax collector, being called. And when we get to chapter 3, Jesus has developed quite a following, and all the disciples are listed. The 12 apostles are sent out to proclaim the message, to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near and to cast out demons, heal the sick. No reason is given in the Gospel of Mark as to why Andrew seems to have disappeared and why he was not invited to go up the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And I wondered, maybe he wasn't included in that simply because the number three is an important number. It's an important number in our faith with three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And three is important from a literary standpoint. It makes more sense that Jesus would have taken three companions rather than four. But why did Andrew get left out? Looking at the other Gospels, there is nothing in Matthew. Andrew is mentioned when he is called along with Simon Peter. And then Andrew is mentioned again with the list of the twelve, the twelve apostles. And those are the only references to Andrew. In the Gospel of Mark, when the twelve are listed, Andrew is mentioned fourth, but he was called second, yet he's mentioned fourth. And this order, it's not the order in which they were called. In Matthew, it is the same thing. Why, why did Andrew get bumped? Andrew is only mentioned once in the Gospel of Luke in second place, right after Peter. In the Gospel of John, however, Andrew was originally one of John the Baptist's followers and became one of the first to follow Jesus on his mission. But I don't see how being a follower of John the Baptist would somehow disqualify Andrew from following so closely and being called up the mountain. Andrew is the first one to follow Jesus. He goes and gets his brother. Later in the Gospel of John, Andrew plays a prominent role in the feeding of the 5,000. To feed the hungry masses, he doesn't just say, oh no, what are we going to do? He goes out and tries to find 
though it couldn't be enough. He tries to find it. He brings the boy who has five barley loaves and two fishes. But Andrew didn't go up the mountain to witness Jesus' transfiguration and hear this voice from heaven calling Jesus the beloved with the command that the disciples were to listen to him. Matthew and Mark both agree that Jesus only took with him Peter, James, and John when he went up the mountain. And last but not least, in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, there is only one mention there of Andrew with the other disciples, devoting themselves in prayer after the resurrection. And here again in that list, he is listed fourth. But this time, John gets mentioned in second place, ahead of his brother, James. We have no indication that Andrew was in any way jealous of not being included in this mountain journey or had any kind of fear of missing out, FOMO. And I think that this is because Andrew was just too busy doing what he was supposed to do. James and John were able to sneak above Andrew on the list because that was important to them. They asked, as we will read later in the Gospel of Mark, if they could sit one at Jesus' right hand, the other at his left hand, when he comes into his glory. They wanted to be recognized for their faithfulness. Andrew just got stuff done. And the world and the church needs more Andrews. We need more Andrews. He wasn't concerned with the primacy of his older brother, Peter, or with James and John. He just got stuff done. In John's telling of it, Andrew was one of the first followers of Jesus. And he told his brother Simon and brought him to Jesus. He was an evangelist, going to find others and bringing them to Jesus. John the Baptist was out there doing the work of salvation, offering a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And Andrew was right out there with him, helping to bring others to the forgiveness that God has for them. He's right out there until Jesus comes along, and then he follows Jesus. When the crowd of thousands needed to be fed, James found what he could. Andrew found what he could. He listened and he learned as a disciple. He did the quiet work of an evangelist, and he made sure that the people got fed, not seeking acclamation, not seeking any kind of praise. He simply did what needed to be done. The body of Christ needs a lot more Andrews. So where's Andrew? All the Andrews that I know in this life, well, they just get stuff done too. Not to single anyone out, But Andrew Snyder comes to mind, and I didn't ask him if I could mention him in my sermon because I'm certain he would have said, no, no thanks. Andrew is one, as I've gotten to know him, who doesn't need that acclamation, doesn't seek out praise. He simply gets stuff done. He is someone that if you need something done, you know you can call on him. Not to lift him up too much, I'm sure He has his off days, as we all do. But Andrew gets stuff done. Growing up, one of my best friends, his name was Andrew Johnson. He got stuff done too. Among other things, he became an Eagle Scout. And we know that Eagle Scouts are famous for just getting stuff done. So I can't find any good reason why Simon or why the Apostle Andrew was left out and didn't go up with Simon Peter and the others. But I really do think it was because he was too busy 
doing what he had been called by Jesus to do as a follower, to share the good news of the kingdom of heaven, to share the good news that it has come near and show that by feeding the hungry and healing the sick. And this is our mission as the church, as the body of Christ in the world. Our mission is to be Andrews. Will we always get it right? Well, no, we won't always get it right, though we will try our best. Reading a bit further in Mark, as Jesus and the three were coming down off the mountain, they encounter a father and his epileptic son. While they were away, while Jesus and the other three were away, Andrew and the rest of the disciples tried to heal this young boy, but they couldn't. They weren't able to do it. Andrew wasn't perfect, and neither are we. The father pleads with Jesus, and the child is made well. Peter wanted to build up on the mountain as they saw this transfiguration, this beautiful vision. He wanted to build booths, one for Moses and Elijah who appeared with Jesus and one for Jesus so that they could capture that moment and hold on to it forever. But the glory of God revealed there on the mountain was not meant to be contained. It is meant to be shared. And that is what Andrew and the others had been doing. This reflects what Jesus was all about, making broken lives whole again. Jesus is all about mending the brokenness in our lives, making us whole again. And in this, the glory of God is not contained in a booth on a mountain. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus, the shining glory has been set out for the world to see, seeking out people and places that call for healing, wholeness, and restored relationship is what we are to be all about. We need a lot more Andrews to do the work that God has placed before us. Our world is so broken, divided, and in need of healing from the disease of this pandemic to the disease of systemic racism and so much more. There is such work left to be done. So use the gifts that God has given you. Play your part well. And where we fall short, the good news is that when we fall short, Jesus will come down and take care of the rest. Amen. What gifts have you been given? How is God empowering you to serve? As you reflect on these questions and the message that I've just shared, we sing, Beautiful Savior.
Living the life of faith, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Creator God, we praise you for our amazing world, for sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us in our stewardship of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, we pray for the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world. We invite your blessing on the work of our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Bishop Craig Satterley. Encourage Jason Mills as he studies at Gettysburg Theological Seminary. Strengthen the faith, Lord, of the members of St. John's Lutheran Church in Barada, Michigan, as well as the faith of their pastor, Reverend Jim Morgan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Glorious God, fill your church with joy as we praise you for who you are and for what you have done for us. Encourage your faithful people to live as beacons of your redemption. It is with gratitude that we thank you for the opportunity to serve others through our food bank and as partners with our Baker Street neighbors. Encourage the leaders on the Pine Ridge Reservation, strengthen their mission, and breathe hope into the lives of their residents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, Sustain those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world. Guide our military as they seek to establish peace. We especially pray for 
Chris Brown, Tyler Barnes, Andrew Devine, Darian Doan, Carson Kozlowski, Joshua Kozlowski, Rusty Landry, Christopher Morgan, Ben Painter, Ryan Schiffner, Jake Sonnenberg, and Eric Wheeler. Channel your love through the work of Jake Koken, our community police officer, as he builds trusting relationships with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who suffer this day, especially Mary Ann Allen, Virginia Bauman, Mary Brenke, Lois Carnes, Marv Cole, Crystal Collins, Dwayne Everett, Ruth Ferguson, Doug Griffin, Jim Hicks, Rhoda Hunter, Kurt Kohlmeyer, Marilyn Kostruski, Michael Mahoney, Linda McClellan, John Nelson, Yvonne Nelson, Theron Palmer, John Ransom, Bob Robbins, Carol Rausch, Audrey Skidmore, Jeannie Smith, Don Spensley, Cheryl Van Patten, Dorothy Weber, Shelby Waters, Ron Westcott, and Matthew White. Holy Spirit, be our healer. Transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Above all, we ask you to comfort the families who have lost loved ones due to the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pay, pray for companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, for endurance as we continue our battle with the coronavirus and for guidance during other struggles we face, that your glory is revealed around and among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer continued prayers for Wendy Prattley, Sharon Jaster, Jim Miller, Matt Anderson, and those we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Caleb Crawford, who is six years old. He has a brain tumor and his parents have been told that there is no more treatment available for him. Be with them and bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for members and friends of this congregation fighting or recovering from the coronavirus, and we pray for the first responders, doctors, and nurses, and everyone offering care in this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for Abby, the niece of Karen Reich, who received a heart kidney transplant, and we thank God for this gift and pray for a strong recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for Ashley Fernandez, daughter of Ralph and Margaret Surgent. A cyst on her spine is causing numbness in her legs as she awaits further diagnosis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for all the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer may inspire us in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet one another with a word of God's peace and love. Today we receive a second special offering for the Lutheran Lakota Shared Ministries at the Pine Ridge Reservation. Thank you for your support of this ministry as they continue to expand ways that they are sharing the good news with the young people of Pine Ridge. And thank you for your entire support of Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church. Let us pray. O Father of the glorious, glorified, perfect Son, be patient with us, still imperfect. Be patient with our gifts as well. Put them to work in your kingdom. Let them shine throughout the world that our Lord might be glorified, that Christ might receive the praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together we sing, Mine eyes have seen the glory. Thanks be to God.